This video was sponsored by Insta360. This is a jet powered model plane I've spent the last month building to see if an RC jet made from foam board and packaging tape can actually fly. Three, two, one, now! I've built hundreds of model planes before, but until now have never used a micro gas turbine to propel them. A micro gas turbine is a real working tiny jet engine that turns kerosene into lots of thrust and lots of noise, just like a full size jet. Usually these cost a couple of thousand dollars, but I've used mine on many previous projects, and now it's time to take it on its riskiest mission yet. On a project that would see me working with a team of aerospace engineers, run fluid simulations, test prototypes, all to see whether I can build and fly an RC jet plane and see what I could learn. And as you'll see, I had some mixed success. The first problem of this project was how to harness the raw power of this jet engine and come up with an aircraft design. I realized I could do with some help, so reached out to a bunch of students who should definitely have the right stuff when it comes to designing high-speed aircraft. These students are from the MAC Initiative, a student-run organization with an aim to build the fastest RC jet in the world with a top speed of a over 600 miles an hour. So yes, they should probably be able to give me some tips. I was thinking about building it out of <laughs> very basic materials. See how far you can push things like foam. I don't know what your opinion is on that. Well, I think it's gonna be melting, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we came up with was a very simple model aeroplane with an engine mounted above the fuselage. This would be incredibly easy to build. As the students went away to crunch some numbers, I decided the next thing to do was to build a half-scale prototype of the plane to see if our chosen configuration would actually fly. And this was put together with foam board, hot glued around carbon spars, to make the wing before I assembled a simple fuselage glued on the tail and then hooked up the control surfaces, added electronics such as this powerful brushless fan on the top to simulate the jet engine and then gave it all a test. Oh, hey. Right, time to get this thing flying. So with that I could head up to the Project Air flying field armed with a couple of Insta360 GO 3 cameras to capture the flight, mounting one on the nose so we could get a good onboard perspective. All right, time for the very first test flight of the prototype aircraft. I'm not sure how it's going to behave in the air, but that's what test flights are for, obviously. So let's go. Chocks away. Well, it's up in the air, it's flying, it's climbing, it's doing all the things an aeroplane should do. I was just trying to use the rudder then, but forgotten that I hadn't got one. <laughs> I think I need less roll authority, so. Bit of down trim. Yeah, it could do with a rudder, I think. Uh, just to bring that nose round. So maybe that's something to consider. Oh, it's flying, it's flying very nicely though. Lots of maneuverability. It feels just about right. Right, let's go for a high speed pass, get an idea of flying this thing at high speeds. Oh, hey. Yeah, it's flying very nicely. Yeah, I think that we can scale this thing up. Mwah! <laughs> Magnifique! <laughs> yes, very nice. Very nice indeed. So the 50% scale electric prototype flew very nicely. But how would a much larger, much heavier jet powered version actually fly? At this point, the chaps from the Mac Initiative had come back with some numbers and it looked like we'd have quite a speedy aircraft on our hands with a power to weight ratio of two to one and even with a pretty basic shape, a top speed of 160 miles an hour. So this plane could end up being the fastest plane I'd flown so far. Importantly though, the stall speed was fair fairly high at 16 meters a second, which meant the plane would simply stop flying and fall out of the sky if its airspeed dropped lower than 35 miles an hour. This was going to be a bit of an issue for takeoff, as we had planned on launching the plane at the usual flying field and we didn't have a proper runway at this site, so we'd have to come up with an interesting solution for takeoff later on. For now, as I started to get a little worried about flying this thing, I wanted to go back to working on the 50% scale prototype one last time to see whether adding a rudder to the tail would improve the plane's maneuverability. As the more control I had over the plane, the easier it would be to fly. So again, it was time to head to the flying field for another real world test flight. This time I mounted the Insta360 GO 3 camera on the wing of the aircraft facing rearwards to get a good angle of the rudder, which would be helpful for seeing how effective it was. Slightly windy conditions today, 
but the rudder, despite the turbulent conditions, seems to be having some effect. It's not particularly powerful, probably because it's so small. It seems a bit more responsive just to be able to get that nose round. So, uh, oh, oh. I just managed to hit the tripod. <laughs> so yes, as you can see, the rudder didn't really help that much. And as we'd be adding another point of failure to the aircraft by including a rudder, we decided to kill this idea early on and keep the design simple. Right then, time to scale this thing up and build the full size version. So let's do that now. I would be building this plane quite differently to almost all other RC jets out there, as I wanted to see whether the good old fashioned method of building RC planes from foam and tape would hold up to the power of a gas turbine. The wing panels, just like on a smaller prototype, were cut out from foam board before being covered in extremely strong fiberglass packaging tape that would form a tough outer skin over the finished aircraft. The panels were scored and creased to allow the sheet to curve around into the shape of an airfoil. Obviously though, this wing would need a lot of reinforcement. So we've got this carbon fibre here and this is going to be the main backbone of the entire wing and we need the wing to be as strong as possible because of the high G manoeuvres that this aeroplane is going to be pulling when it's up in the air. It's going to be quite a heavy aeroplane with the jet engine and all of the fuel. So we need this wing to be strong and for it not to fold up and basically disintegrate in the air as it uh, pulls some G's. The carbon spar was carefully cut to size before being glued to the wing sheet, which was then curved around some ribs to form the symmetrical airfoil shape that myself and the Mac Initiative had optimised for this design. With it all glued together, I had a super rigid and lightweight wing which only took an hour or so to make. Now with a fuselage I cut out templates taken from the CAD model and then traced around these to draw out the right shape. These parts were then cut out using a craft knife before being hot glued together just like with the wing. And now quickly my first RC jet was coming together. After the wing had been very securely welded in place I could turn attention to the very important matter of the engine mount. So I marked up some aluminium, bent it to shape with some gentle encouragement and then epoxied these mounts through the wing to tie the whole thing together. This is all turning out to be very DIY. You're not supposed to make jet powered model planes like this, but you know what? Let's see if you can. <laughs> Altogether, we had a very rigid airframe. Now to turn attention to the elevator and ailerons, the movable control surfaces that would pitch and roll the aircraft to control its direction. And as is the case for everything on this plane, these had to work perfectly to make sure that the plane didn't break apart in the sky. Back to the issue of how to get this thing in the air, you might have been wondering how we were going to accelerate the plane to our takeoff speed of 35 miles an hour without a proper runway. And I thought probably the best way to do this would be to build a big ramp using some lengths of aluminium truss section, which is usually used for the much more boring job of holding up large tents. I assembled a wheeled dolly, which would sit on the ramp and slot around the fuselage of the plane, allowing it to accelerate along the length of the ramp before falling off. Now, the plane wouldn't have any brakes or any way of holding itself still on the ramp as the engine ramped up for takeoff. So I decided to make a simple pin system which could hold the plane in position before being yanked out just at the point that the aircraft got to full throttle. With the electronics, fuel pump, radio, GPS and everything else all working perfectly, we could now fire up the engine for its first static test run outside, which would be mainly to see if anything caught fire. In the spirit of avoiding fire, the final preparation had been to add some aluminium foil tape around the fuselage to reflect the 700 degree heat from the exhaust tube. Best pin this thing down. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is crazy. Oh, that was so terrifying. The whole thing was shaking around just then. This is going to be a scary thing to fly. So we actually used quite a lot of fuel just sitting there. So I predict that we'll only have about two minutes of actual flight time. Tomorrow is the big day. We're going to put this thing in the air 
and uh, see if it actually flies. It's going to be scary. <laughs> I've never flown a jet before. I've never flown anything as sketchy as this before, I don't think. And that's saying something for this channel. But we're going to be in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of loads of fields. So if the worst happens, I'll have my fire extinguisher ready. Now, just before we go up to the flying field and I show you the first test, I want to say a massive thank you to Insta360, who've actually sent me these cameras to put on the aeroplane. The Go 3 eliminates the hassle of bulkier cameras and is super flexible, allowing for more unique creative possibilities, which have really helped me to make this video. You might have noticed that earlier on in the video I was using the Go 3 on my hat to capture some really cool point of view shots. The Insta360 Go 3 is also really lightweight, at just 35 grams, which is pretty incredible, and this meant that I could mount the camera almost anywhere on this 5.5 kilogram aircraft. The really cool thing about the Go 3 is the multifunctional action pod with a flip touchscreen, which makes framing shots really nice and easy. It's sort of the best of both worlds. It also has a magnetic mounting system that makes fixing it to anything super easy. The other really cool thing about the Insta360 GO 3 is that you can change the aspect ratio and this allows you to reframe footage for social media after you've shot it. So for instance, you can just attach this to anything, record something and then go into the app and edit the footage so that you can change the aspect ratio and make sure that you're capturing absolutely everything that you want to. So if you want to capture your own projects with your own Go 3, then there's a link in the description. Check that out and get 5% off and a few freebies as well. Thanks very much to Insta360 and yeah, now on with the first test. The day dawned with bright skies and low winds, perfect for a test flight. It's a bit icy this morning, I think it's minus two. We got everything assembled, the flight gear prepared and the camera set up before wheeling out the jet and carrying it very carefully out to the ramp. The flight plan was simply to circuit these empty fields where we had permission to fly and if needed make a crash landing. As everything we'd been working on over the last month was now finally ready, I knew now it was going to be over to me to not make a mess of things. Going on, go three, camera on the tail is on. Jets take off heavy, land heavy, and they're already on fire, as someone said to me once. So yes, as you'd imagine, I'd need to keep my airspeed up and keep the whole thing together. Although this was, in the grand scheme of things, a very simple and pretty inexpensive plane with a very second-hand engine on it, I really didn't want to see this thing get smashed to pieces. Okay, my GPS is ready. With my checklist now down to the last few boxes, and after many long days and nights, it was now time to go for an engine start and trust in my flying skills. All right, start up, engaging. Full check, left, right. One final control check, now I could go for throttle up. Would it get off the launch ramp? Ready? Going for ramp up and then three, two, one and go. Success, it was in the air and accelerating nicely. Rolling it level, the plane was already flying at over 100 miles an hour by the time I needed to bring it around. 
But then we had a problem. Round. Oh, lost engine. Lost the engine. And then we had an even bigger problem. Lost the, oh no, lost the control. It was always going to be a sketchy first flight, but still, the loss of the plane was gutting, especially when it had been looking quite good. But why? Why had the plane crashed? And why did the engine stop working only a few seconds into the flight? Well, thankfully, we had lots of great camera angles to analyze the crash, and most importantly, the GO-3 had survived, completely unscathed. Is it still rolling? It's still rolling. The problems had started early on, with the plane pitching down more than expected on the ramp. Quickly countering this with the elevator, I managed to level the plane, but then narrowly avoided smashing into the dry stone wall at the edge of the field, as the plane was very pitch sensitive. Getting the plane straight and level, it accelerated to a peak speed of 118 miles an hour before I pulled up to bleed off speed and get it turned back towards the takeoff site. At this point though, the engine audibly shut down, the aircraft losing all of its thrust. All I had to do was now keep the plane level and point it back towards the takeoff point, but as I tried to roll it straight, the roll kept going. Here I realised I must have lost signal with the aircraft. Momentarily I had control back, but then the plane rolled back over to the left again, smashing into the neighbouring empty farm fields, completely obliterating itself. So why had I lost engine power and then the radio signal? Right, now I've reviewed the footage, I can reveal that the reason the engine stopped was due to an air bubble being trapped in the lines and basically, yeah, stalling this engine. So when I pulled up and went into a turn at about 100 and something miles an hour, the pump for this engine sucked up a load of air and yeah, it killed the engine. Now what I should have had between the engine and the fuel tank was something called an air bubble trapper or air bubble trap. And this particular component is to stop this problem happening by basically filtering out the air bubbles. Why didn't I have one? Well, basically I'd lifted this jet engine and all of the equipment straight from my last project, the DIY hovercraft. And yeah, I'd just forgotten that I'd need one of these things. With an aeroplane, the fuel is going to be going absolutely absolutely everywhere, sloshing around in the tank. Oh, I just, I don't know how I forgot about this. That won't happen again. <laughs> now the thing is that I probably would have been able to bring the aeroplane home and land it in one piece if the radio hadn't cut out. So the question is, why did it cut out? Well, I don't know. This is a bit of a mystery at the moment. So maybe I'm going to have to use backup receivers and other things and other backup systems in the future. In this project, our DIY engineered jet, built from foam board and packaging tape, not only flew, but also achieved some remarkable speeds. With DIY engineering, complete success rarely occurs, and every mistake serves as a valuable lesson. But you can be sure that the lessons learned from this project will only push us forwards. Here's to the version 2. Now a massive thank you to Insta360 for making this whole project and this whole video possible. If you want your own Insta360 GO 3, like the one in this video, then check out the link in the description to get 5% off and a free selfie stick. Check out that link down below and if you want to watch another Project Air video while you're waiting for the next one to come out, then here's one right here. And yeah, I think you'll like this one if you've got to the end of this video. So check that one out and I'll see you on the next video. See you later.